Welcome to the weekend preview here for Los Limitos Racecourse on this weekend of Halloween, October 30th and 31st. Pleased to be joined by the voice of Los Alamitos, Mike Corona. Welcome back to the program. And uh, some breaking news. I just learned of it coming through Twitter. That Golden Boy, the expected favorite in the Golden State Million, will be out of the final. Well, that is huge news, isn't it, Jose? Uh, yes. Uh, quite, uh, quite a disappointment. But uh, obviously, it'll still be a great race for a huge purse. But, uh, but he was a key part of the equation, wasn't he? He's been so good. So uh, across the year, yeah, he looks he looked sensational, winning with plenty of trouble, despite plenty of trouble uh, in the in those trial nights. And you know, he was the Edward Milling winner. He was he won the first few million opportunity of the year. So a lot was riding on him, and uh, being one of the favorites. But uh, hopefully, we'll get to see him later in the year, maybe for the trials for the Deuce for the Los Alamitos Two Million Fraternity later in uh, later uh, November. But yeah. we do have a Saturday, night, a Saturday night program, 10 races on the card. Before I want to dive into this card and, and what race we want to look at, how was that little bit of a preview for that big Thurbit Stakes final last weekend on Sunday night? That was quite a race there to complete the program. Yeah, what a great way to cap the weekend. Uh, what a terrific field and uh, a great contest it was. So many different styles of racing uh, with uh, Oh Jerry so brilliant uh, in the early stages. Uh, and then the ultimate winner getting that rail split, and then the late bid from Castle Gate. And uh, gee, if that's uh, if that's the preview for the fifty thousand dollar final in a month or so, uh, bring bring it on. And I think if you're the connections of Oh Jerry, you're you're still happy with the performance because you ran your race. You you didn't completely fade. You were still battling. And if there was a race you wanted to lose, it was probably this one. You wanted to get the loss out of the way. And now uh, regroup for the final and, and all systems go. So uh, that was a great stretch tool there. Three horses uh, coming down to a very terrific finish. Yeah, right, there were two at... wind streaks that were snapped, yes. both for uh, O'Jerry and Castlegate. But the, both horses did their connections proud. They, they yes. lost no admirers whatsoever uh, with their respective efforts. And O'Jerry can probably move forward a little bit fitness-wise. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was in, an, in an, an inside duel. So if the post position plays out better for him in the final or in the stakes race, uh, he'll he'll be right there for sure. Yeah, that's that's going to be a fun race uh, to look forward to on the thoroughbred side. And speaking of, of thoroughbreds and around the hook, uh, what race do you want to take us to here for this week? Well, I thought I might visit a hook race for the first time in this segment. Uh, race number four is another really good allowance with a headline horse, an absolute top liner around the turn, the quarter horse Ballast Point, who comes in off a six-month layoff and is a prohibitive four to five favourite on Ed Burgard's morning line. Great to see Ballast Point back. I'm a huge fan of the horse and the brewery for whom he's named. But, uh, Jose, I've just got it in the back of my mind that he might be slightly vulnerable at the end of a thousand yards off the layoff. He has been beaten under such circumstances previously, actually by Castlegate, who yes. grabbed him late. Um, and when I look at the odds, I just think that winding might be worth a shot at five to one. He's the horse I'm interested in. Yeah, he's, he's drawn in gate six. And I think he's drawn well because obviously the speed is along the rail. But let's take a look at that latest effort by Winding. He's a perfect two for two since getting claimed by this barn. And last time out, he, he showed a, a very good finish there to, to be able to get for the win. Yeah, he had gate two on this occasion. He was the last into stride. And one of the things I like about Winding, and I've really enjoyed watching and calling several of his wins. He's had a terrific campaign. He's won five of his last eight races. And I like the fact that he's not field shy. He can make moves along the inside. He's comfortable and confident splitting horses or he can peel out wide. And he comes with what has become a rather reliable rally. And if there's any chink in the armor, 
with Ballast Point, who obviously is the class runner, but uh, if, if fitness just catches up with him late, Winding has a chance, I think, to pick him off. Yeah, and here we have the leader, three to five favorite, has a two-length lead at the top of the stretch, winding angles out and surges nicely just to get up in the final strides. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned, when Ballast Point was beaten off a layoff last time, it was by Castlegate. We know how good Castlegate is, and uh, probably there's a difference between having Castlegate bearing down on you and the likes of Winding. Still, I just like this horse's consistency, honesty, and style. And uh, Ricardo Ramirez rides him well. The horse who finished third in that race we just showed you was a subsequent winner. Um, it was an allowance victory for Winding after pretty much his earlier successes had been in the claiming ranks. He actually won a daytime thoroughbred race here in September. And uh, at five to one, I'm willing to take a swing. And I, I think he'll be every bit of that five to one because there's going to be a ton of money coming in on balance point, deservingly so. So he's going to, and you know, Whitey has shown the ability to break better. That wasn't a common start for him that he broke slow, but he was able to recover. He has shown the ability to be near or on the pace and, you know, against less speed runners, less speed types than balance point. But I think if he breaks, you know, fairly a little bit better, he's able to kind of stay within three or four lengths of balance point early stages, he is going to be finishing. Uh, so five to one, I think he'll be every bit of that five to one at post time. Now, Asian Rain is a very fast horse breaking from the yes. far outside. Do you think Asian Rain is fast enough to put any pressure on Ballast Point? Or is really no horse on the grounds fast enough to put pressure on Ballast Point? <laughs> I don't know if there is anyone quick enough to <laughs> kind of keep within two lengths of Ballast Point in the first 100 to 150 yards. I feel like Asian Rain, that 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 drop in class two starts ago, was a good confidence booster. He figured out, hey, I can still go to the lead. I can still dominate. He he, he was able to come back and win again. 21 and 2 is very sharp what he did to start to go. But balance point is on another, <laughs> on another level. He's so quick out of the gate. I don't know if anyone can uh, put any, any better pressure, but at least he can feel that someone is chasing him. I think there's good enough speed in this field like Asian rain to feel like he's had a few horses chasing him. But let's see if he can, uh, he can break sharp for that as I post balance point. Yeah, look, it's great to have him back in action. Yeah. And uh, if he if he comes around the turn three lengths in front and wins by three lengths, I won't be surprised in the slightest. <laughs> uh, and I'll tip my hat to him. I'm a big fan. But again, just four to five off the layoff at a thousand yards versus five to one winding. I, I, I reckon it's a reasonable price to, to, to take a shot. This might be where the favourite's vulnerable. And Ballast Point did get beat last time out off a layoff, and he comes back off a layoff once again. So you might be onto something right there with Ballast Point and winding in race number four. That's going to be the close-out leg of that early pick four. Michael, thanks so much for that. Uh, looking forward to the calls this weekend, getting close to Halloween, and getting close to the Golden State Meter Futurity final on Sunday. We'll see how that one shapes up after the defections there of uh, a very probable favorite there in uh, Golden Boy in Sunday's final. Michael, thanks a lot, and I'll see you out there this weekend. Good on you, mate. Hooroo. The Flash is back at Los Alamitos Racecourse. Fastest qualifier flashback will head California's richest race for three-year-olds, the Los Alamitos Super Derby, on Sunday night, November 7th. Flashback will come in as the fastest qualifier to the Super Derby and will face an outstanding field led by grade one stakes winning Phillies, Apolitical Patty, and Reason to Fly MV. The Super Derby winner moves on to the champion of champions, Porter Horse Racing's best. It's always at Los Alamitos. Welcome back to the program. Now joined by Christopher Wade, your Los Alamitos on track analyst there through the Los Alamitos Simulcast Signal and giving you plenty of winners uh, last week across many different racetracks, including the championships down at Albuquerque. Let's start with that. Was there anything that impressed you out of those championship races at, at Albuquerque? Well, yeah, of course, uh, the big winner and the big, the big race danger every danger. year for uh, danger was impressive. That's uh, uh, Dean Fry's piece of cake. I mean, he, he takes his horse throughout the country uh, in the summertime and just keeps bringing the money home back ATM to Minnesota. Machine. It's like it's he's a the machine. Was. He, sure is. Machine. he takes him to the big dances. He fires in the big dances. Uh, we all would like to own one of those horses that just takes you to the big races and delivers. So congrats to the connections there. Danger 
Uh, was that a back-to-back wins in that in that race? I think it he was. He won it, right? Yeah, I think he won, he won it last, last year, as well. year over the surface, and uh, he just he runs anywhere. He runs a Rio Dose, He runs here. He runs anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So congrats to the Canadians and congrats to AQHA on uh, their Bank of America Challenge Championship nights championship night this past weekend and at Albuquerque. But switching gears here back to Los Alamitos, uh, what race do you want to take us here for this Saturday night? I'm taking, I'm looking to the the ninth race. I'm looking to the outside horse, uh, the eight horse, uh, Carisma Vista. This horse uh, did train uh, for the debut back in March and did show me a B plus work back way back in March. It's obviously something went amiss, took some time off, came back here in the, uh, September worked pretty well. I gave him a B minus minus in that workout, but this is a nice size runner, a good looker. And in that uh, debut from post eight of nine, did have some trouble away from the gate. Got fractious, uh, bumped back, uh, was kind of rank midway, then angled in when it crossed and uh, was finishing well. If you watch this horse right near the wire, the horse was just trying to have broke slow from post number eight, was crossed, post eight of nine. I uh, was kind of slow on the stride, was ranked midway, just didn't like the dirt in his face, angles in right here. But watch right near the wire, right about here. The horse just starts to level out right there and taking a hold of the rider and was just, look at that gallop out, was just, just getting in the stride right then and there. This horse, like I said, did show some good ability uh, in the workouts prior. And uh, with everything factored in, the trouble, track variant, this horse's figure was pretty good for tonight's event and uh, draws well to the outside. And I think has a big look here at uh, four to one. Yeah, that was a pretty significant uh, bothered uh, start. He broke slow, got pushed out, and then raced greenly there behind horses. But you can still, he's still eager. And like you mentioned, he's just starting to level out, uh, approaching the finish line. And then the rider has to take a strong pull there behind horses. Uh, so Charisma Vista, uh, what do you think of the outside post? Do you think that, that might lead to a, a cleaner start this time around? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it, this horse should get a better start here tonight and draw with the outside. And of course, four to one. Any other racetrack in the country, fifteen to one. But of course, Mr. Ed Burgart misses absolutely nothing <laughs> and uh, lays him there at uh, a four to one for us. Uh, Christmas Vista. Just, that's all he's giving you, just four to one. Four Ed to one. Burgart ran dead last in a nine horse field, beat three and a plus lengths, and uh, we get four to one because he doesn't miss anything. Mr. Ed he is, he's the what the third, yeah, third choice on the morning night, almost the uh, fourth choice, third choice of the morning night. But outside post, uh, you saw the backtrack, uh, looked uh, eager to run, approaching the finish line. Maybe switching to the outside post might lead to a much better beginning. Charisma Vista, part of the late double, and also part, of course, of the pick six and the late pick four. Do you think uh, Ravani is a, is a will be a strong favorite at post time? What do you think of that that trial he comes out of? She comes out of. The horse ran, uh, had, had a good amount of trouble. That got uh, late, uh, horse uh, shipped in, uh, broke slow, head cocked sideways, drifted in. That's my only concern. Coming back on the rail, the horse has been less than stellar from the rail. Last time, the prior effort was not too bad. The horse will be your favorite. Uh, you're yeah. probably looking at uh, six to five, seven to five on Garavini there. Uh, second time back over the oval. Yeah, 300 yards and not a lot of room for error in that event. So Garavani's going to have to break sharply. Front of the inside post, but Chris is going towards the outside with Charisma Vista in, in race number nine. Are you doing any other racetracks in a, uh, in the Nightlines program this week? Yeah, we're doing uh, Lone Star Park. We're doing a races, uh, I think, races two through ten, and then we're doing the last four from Evangeline. All right. Looking forward to that in us. You can catch it in every edition of the Nightlines program. Chris, thanks so much for the inside. Hope you get every bit of that four to one and charisma vista there <laughs> from the outside post. I'll see you out there this weekend. I right, bless you. Have a good day. See you. Racing fans, the traditional $2 pick six at Los Alamitos is always a great bet. On Sunday, August 1st, a one-night carryover of 14000 led to an outstanding total pool of over $132,000. And the payouts are tremendous. Highlighted by a season-high payout of over $94,000 on May 21st. And remember, on Sunday nights when there's not a carryover, Los Alamitos will add $10,000 to the pick six pool. Talk about some good old-fashioned pick six excitement at Los Alamitos. The traditional $2 pick six, a great bet, a great deal. It's happening at Los Alamitos. That is correct. The pick six deal has been well received by the players. We had another strong pool last weekend. And in addition, we had a 200,000 plus pick four as well part of last weekend. So a uh, uh, tip of the hat to the Los Alamitos players there supporting the pools. And since we're talking about 
pools in the last week. Why don't we begin by recapping last week, Orlando, that tremendous thoroughbred 1,000-yard allowance to end the card. That's a pretty good pretty good duel down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And like Michael Rona said, nice appetizer to the main course of what we'll see on November 27 with the 1,000-yard, $50,000 final here. And what a tremendous group of horses lined up in that allowance race last Sunday. Uh, let's see, six of the top 12 horses in the trial and the uh, point standings were in there. And I believe it was four out of the top five in the point standings. Yes. Also in there. And uh, when it when it was all said and done, a tremendous effort by Capture the Sea, who uh, with that nice victory came from uh, 12th in the point standings all the way up to now being in the uh, in the top three, I believe. Uh, my, no, top four. Top four. He's okay. the third highest rated uh, male horse in that in sure. the point standings right there. Uh, there is one uh, female that is sitting third. And remember, not only are we going to have that fifty thousand dollar final for uh, for the top point getters, but also the females, the the fillies and mares, have a thirty thousand dollar race yes. to uh, to go for on that November twenty seventh card. But again, a tremendous race on Sunday. And uh, we had a chance to talk to uh, Matt Fails right after uh, after he won the big race with Capture the Sea. And uh, here's what he had to say about that nice big victory, Jose. Congratulations, Matt. A heck of a race and a, just a big setting because this race kind of sets you up perfectly now for the $50,000 final. What do you think of the race? Well, the race had a big feel to it in the paddock. I was saying this feels like a big race. All the top dogs are in here. And uh, I can't say enough about Diego and his ride on the horse. He saved ground, and uh, he, he really rode the horse nice. Kind of a, a key for you, do you feel that old Jerry just got a little bit of pressure early on and kind of left your, the inside uh, area open for uh, for your horse? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, old Jerry hasn't run in a while. I'm sure he's going to be a lot fitter next time. We had a race in between the last showdown between them, so my horse had a little more air tonight. But I know that we definitely have our work uh, cut out for us in the finals. Uh, I know Eric, old Jerry, Castlegate, they're going to come ready. Congratulations. Looking forward to a big final. There was Matt Fels talking about uh, Capture the Sea. Uh, he's been a very, very good, consistent horse, Orlando. So that was a kind of a statement win that now he's he's definitely one of the top, top runners to be considered for that final. And like horse that he claimed. Yes. Uh, owner Dan Wells. Uh, trainer Matt Fails, they claimed this horse and uh, they started pointing him to uh, to this race and the horse has just been clicking. Uh, got a nice email from owner Dan Wells. Uh, he said that uh, this NASCAR style point system uh, was great for him. He's a young, you know, young uh, man and he said it was just pretty exciting for him to kind of get involved uh, with this kind of a, a, a you know, type of a, of a program for his horse. And he just loves it. He loves it, and I bet he loves it, you know, quite a lot when you're sitting in fourth uh, in the point standings. And I remember this race is a, is a quarter horse preferred race. So uh, quarter horses that are eligible to run at 1,000 yards, you know, if they had a 660-yard workout or um, or have earned any points, they would, be, uh, they would get pre first preference to run in that final. And we have a really good one, Jose, that is back in action on Saturday night in race number four. A horse by the name of Ballast Point. Yeah, Ballast Point. Before we we touch base about the comeback effort of Ballast Point on the Saturday night, I'm looking at the standings there on the Los Alamitos Twitter feed right now. The updated ones. Lucky Mine is the only filly in the top five, actually top three. If you're the connections, are you tempted to go in the fifty? Or you're, you know what? You know what? I'm the top of the Phillies. Let me just go for the thirty. What do you What do you think would be the strategy? I, I mean, I think she should probably go with the Phillies and Mares because that's what she's been facing, right? Uh, she's one of those horses that have been kind of running against uh, Phillies and Mares. Uh, it, she actually was in action not too long ago. I think it was, she was also raced, uh, was it on Sunday that she also participated? I think that, race Sunday there? earlier in the card. Yeah, earlier in the yeah, card. And, that, and that race was for the Distaffers, if, yeah. I, if I remember correctly. So I think they would go for that, go that race. Um, that's a really tough, you know, really salty, tough group of uh, males that she would yeah. have to face. Uh, you know, not sure what Lorenzo Ruiz will do, but I, I have a feeling that it would be uh, pointing her to that thirty thousand dollar race. Yeah, she's certainly currently currently sitting on third there. The other filly 
uh, next underneath will be all the way down to 11. That's and counting. So uh, a good look into the current uh, top 10 standings there as we approach that later November uh, stakes final. But like you were mentioning, uh, you know, kind of seg- segueing uh, how we have the comebacker ballast point on Sunday night. Race number four, he draws the inside post Orlando. We've seen him put some tremendous performances together around the hook. Last time out, he got he was beat by Castlegate, who just missed narrowly there by behind Capture the Sea. Uh, but you had a chance, an opportunity to talk with uh, Paul Jones. We're here with trainer Paul Jones this Saturday. Paul, the top top eight seventy horse, he's really become an outstanding horse at a thousand yards as well. Ballast Point is back here at Los Alamitos at a thousand yards. It's a bit of a layoff that he's been on, but how do you think he'll do in his return? Yeah, it's quite a long layoff. Um, he hasn't run since April. Um, but he's been training well. He's really doing good. Um, you know, a thousand yards might be a little a little tough for his return, but it's a non-winners of two at a thousand yards, and so it's the right conditions. Looks like we got one tough horse in there, but hopefully he'll he'll make the lead and do like he normally does, and uh, hopefully the thoroughbreds won't be able to catch him. Just hoping he can hold off the late charge of the thoroughbreds, so definitely he'll have the speed and he'll hopefully be in the lead, and we'll see what happens. All right, so there was Paul Jones talking about Ballast Point Orlando. Ballast Point, a comebacker, has not raced since April seventeenth. Uh, what do you think about the uh, his, you know, his, you know, being off for, for for a few months? Well, you know, they've been training him uh, nicely, steadily. He's got several works uh, at uh, six hundred and sixty yards. I believe he may have even had a, a shorter work uh, at some point as well. Maybe uh, looking, you know, there was a possibility of running uh, five hundred and fifty yards as well. But all in all, this horse is, you know, it's sharp. He's a veteran horse. He's a five-year-old, so I'm sure the time off did him well. And we've seen this horse with some super fast races at 870 yards, uh, had a super 1,000-yard time, 51.67, as well here at Los Alamitos. So we know that he can uh, he can deliver some fast clockings. And I think this group, you know, like you mentioned, he went against Castlegate last out. I think this is a softer yeah. field. I see this race as a nice uh, prep race for him to run in the thousand yard final in a couple of, you know, next month. Uh, you know, Prince Ricky looks solid. He's had some nice races. Winding is another horse that I, I kind of took a look at here. But as far as my early pick four, I thought, you know, the ballast point is a single uh, in that sequence. Ooh, Professor G, we just had uh, announcer Mike Rona come through. His analysis this week was focused on winding. He thinks winding can post the else in Orlando on okay. ballast point. So yeah. he, well, you know, the horse has been running a long time. So, uh, you know, he might be, you know, this might be a time to, to get him. But, you know, he's had some really nice steady works. And he's definitely, you know, the fastest horse in here uh, when he's in his game. So, Orlando, t- to clarify, so you're telling me balance point is eligible to enter that final, even though he's not currently in the top 10? That's correct. He's The, it's a, the race is quarter horse preferred. Okay. So get preference, uh, first preference. So there it is. Balance point, this could be a uh, stepping stone to get him sharp and ready to go into that uh, into that final there that a lot of these sharp thoroughbreds have been kind of buying for position. So balance point will be the closeout leg of the early pick four in race number four. So he was going to be probably a popular single in that early pick four. The pick six began in race number five, Orlando. I think this is a very nice competitive pick six sequence. I'm calling it right now, Orlando. We're going to have a carryover. Wow. We are going to have a carryover for Sunday night. I think it's that difficult of the sequence. So why don't we take a, a quick glance at this uh, at this race number five. The money is going to be between two horses. And they're drawn side by side. Some king is up. Has been due. Overdue. <laughs> To get that made a diploma. I remember first time out, and uh, he was he was a little bit difficult to control from that inside post. He ended up getting disqualified. He had a horrible start last time out, and he got beat by a nose by Jesse B. being a friend who I think we'll be, we'll be seeing later on tonight. So no doubt that he's going to attract money, but Ed Burgard made the newcomer incredible. The two to one more than favorite there uh, coming in from Lone Star. Absolutely, and I really like this workout. Uh, he went against a horse that we'll also see later tonight by the name of, uh, of Duggan. 
uh, in a workout back on October 16th. And uh, on my notes here on that workout, I thought that, you know, the horse flew out of the gate. He drifted just a little bit inside, but he was such quick into his stride, Jose. And then he pulled away from his foe so, so easy and was under a hand right from that point on, just guzzling up ground. And I continue with a really nice stride after after the wire and through his gallop out. Just a really nice effort on this morning work here for uh, for Incredible, who's on the outside post. There he is. He went a little bit towards the inside. But just look how easily he just separates away from uh, Duggan as the uh, as the workout continues here. And uh, not not wasn't asked too much and uh, just continue nice and easy. So really like the work. And I think he'll be uh, tough to beat in this race number five. He looked sharp that in the workout. He was doing pretty much everything on his own, as you can see there for the barn of Monte Rosa. Owner breeder Richard Richard Jones uh, Johnson uh, coming in from Mozart. Uh, he was part of a blanket finish. I want to say five or six runners in that trial at Lozart Park were separated by maybe a neck. So that was a blanket finish, but he looks like he has a good amount of talent. The money's going to be between those two, uh, the majority of those. Uh, we've given Trick a little bit of an opportunity in previous races, Orlando. He's going to yeah. be a big long shot. He, he might be a horse for the exacta, for the try. Uh, Trick will draw the outside post for the Junior Quarter Horses Incorporated. But no doubt that the money is going to be towards Keats 6 and 7 there in race number 5. Race number 6, uh, 110 yards. Just a quick glance at this one. We ha do have the breeding on winning cocktail. A political patty, uh, Zuma for sports comes to mind. This is a, a, a grab back type of race, and this is why one is. I feel like this race might produce a good price for this sequence. So I, I feel like this is going to be a, an interesting puzzle for the pick six. Yeah, this is a, a kind of a difficult race to kind of figure yes. out. Moon cocktail, like you mentioned, um, she's a feisty one. She is a feisty yes. one, extremely. Uh, you know her her breeding lines pop out because of that connection to a political, um, uh, excuse me, uh, zooming for spots. Uh, a political four, patty. Morning cocktail. Yeah. 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 So uh, slight more than my favorite and do whoop a doo, but I just don't really have a strong opinion in this race. Uh, maybe cool and feisty, a little bit of lean from the outside with Don Nicasio, but uh, yeah, that's that's a race I want no part of. Uh, in, in any kind of sequence, if you can get involved in the pick six, uh, that's going to be a, a very interesting puzzle. But in race number seven, here's another work, uh, another workout that I like here. A horse that is coming in from Reed also remember the park. That is Mr. C cartel. He also worked on October 16th and, uh, Mr. C cartel was on the outside, I believe on this drill. Yes. So. Let me bring up this workout. So he was on the outside in this morning workout. He was timed in 1220. I like I like his just the motion that he showed here. Uh, watch the outside of his two team set. Good quick acceleration. I like how he, he kept a fairly straight path in the early stages and then he kept reaching. There's a little bit of a drift there, but once he leveled out, he just eager to go, ends up under a pool. Uh, so he wasn't really asked for much through the gallop out. It was just about getting him out of the gate. I really liked the way he moved there in that morning workout, 12.20 for him. Yeah, under a big hole, like you mentioned, across the wire and then just really easy from there. And, uh, you know, I like how you mentioned uh, he was pretty low to the ground when the horse, yeah. when the gates opened, low to the ground and just kind of exploded. And um, we saw a little bit of trouble from the uh, workmate that was kicking good time, going 12.9. Uh, horse kind of looked like he lifted a little bit, leaving there. Uh, but a really nice effort from Mr. C. Cartel. He's two to one, a slight two to one choice on Ed Burger's morning line. Lasix are coming off. Uh, he raced with Lasix in both times at uh, at uh, out of state. He does have experience under the lights, which I think is a positive coming in from Remington Park. Uh, so that's a positive. The lights won't be something completely new to him. And I think he lands a pretty soft field that has not shown a ton of. Uh, talent up to this point, other than maybe over again already, who's competed in some trials event. But I do like Mr. C. Cartel there in race number seven, the start of the late pick four. Uh, race number eight, Orlando pick three, 300 yards allowance. Sweet Dasher Fire, uh, Edinburgh Million finalist. 
Sly Fighter 2 choice. The layoff is the main concern for me. No doubt there's talent. But this is another one of those races. There's going to be a few a number of ways to go as far as handicapping this race. Yeah, pretty uh, wide open race. I actually went four deep in this one on my, in my pick four ticket. But, you know, the four sweet dash of fire looks to be the toughest runner there. But, again, has not run since finishing seventh in the Edberg Million Futurity. Before that, uh, she won her trial to the Edberg Million. But this is a solid field. There's a couple of really interesting horses there. Terrific Chrome, uh, Nefty D Dynasty Gelding that uh, won a race really nicely at Ridoso Downs and has finished in the money in a couple of those big trials down there. And then came here to Los Alamitos, uh, landed in the uh, Golden State Million trial that produced the fastest qualifier, Golden Boy, and also another qualifier in Hallelujah Nights. And, you know, you can be, maybe make the excuse that um, – he, this horse had not run under the lights, mm -hmm. and we, we've seen a few of those horses that, you know, they tend they tend to kind of um, not not struggle a little bit under the yeah. lights. I guess I should say. And but you also have a horse like number seven, Amadeus MV, who we've seen this horse just deliver a lot of nice nice efforts this season, and send me a reason V coming off of a three quarter length win in an upset fashion over Stuck in Probate. So. You know, there's a lot of horses here that uh, have shown some good performances on their on their past performances. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty interesting race. Yeah, just being a friend of two, we just defeated Some King is up, who uh, by this point in the night won't know what he did earlier in the night. Send me a reason V defeated Stuck in Probate, who ran earlier tonight already up to this point, so we'll know what he did. Uh, so this is a very interesting race, I thought, in race number eight. You know, earlier in the season. We saw quite a, maybe two or three runners out of the Dash of Frida from the family of, uh, yeah. he's a uh, uh, he's a Dash of Fire, and when I'm a fearless hero, and from those two or three runners that we saw, I thought this one was the most talented. I don't know if she has now progressed and has developed since June, but in my early indication, I thought she was going to be the most talented of that group. Let's see how she fires off the layoff here for Jose Flores and Eduardo Nicasio. There's two races left. You know what time it is. Late double time, race number nine. Talked to Christopher Wade. He gave us a pick here. He was like, Mr. Ed Burgard only gave me four to one on Charisma Vista. So <laughs> he was unhappy with the morning line, but he said, you know what? This this Philly showed us a run past the finish line. She never leveled down. She is buying a good post here, drawing the outside. But the money will probably be on Garavani, Orlando. What do you think about Garavani at nine to five? You know what? Can I what? say that I actually like a different horse? Ooh, Orlando G. What do you like? <laughs> I actually like the four, a political B hope. Okay. Uh -huh. Two to one. Uh, the horse is uh, also one of those that is coming from Ridoso and Remington yes. Park. And now has has one out uh, under his belt here. Uh, excuse me, her belt here at Los Alamitos. And I think the horse is nicely drawn. I think uh, the horse will do really well second out here at Los Al. And as far Indeed. as Garavani is concerned, uh, you know, we've seen some nice efforts here at Los Al. But um, the the rail from over there from her, I, I'll kind of stick with the four, a political be hope. Yeah, that's the thing that worries me about her. She's faced some very good horses already in her career, but the rail kind of worries she's me. She's a lot. Yeah. She's ducked in. She's run the rail before. She's run well before from the rail. This will be her first Fifth time in seven starts that she's stuck on the rail, Orlando. Yeah. So she's familiar with this post, but I'm not so sure she's ultra comfortable along the inside. That might make her vulnerable. If you can beat her, uh, and if you can beat the four, you're probably looking at a very good price on anyone else there in race number nine. If you, if you look at what she's done from there, she's in three of those times she's went, she's gone in. Yes. And the last time the comment says she ducked in. So you know, that's, that's why kind of why I kind of stayed away from her a little bit and went with the a horse, in, you know, kind of in the middle area with the 4A political b -hook. And if up to this point you're still alive in the pick six, good luck. We're racing number 10, Orlando. Good luck. <laughs> this is an ultra competitive allowance event. And we got a field of eight horses set to go here in this allowance event, 300 yards. In your pick four for the night lines, how did you, how did, did you go, Orlando? I went five deep. Oof. I went five deep because I singled a political behope in race number nine. 
and uh, hope, hoping that I'm still alive in race number 10. And then I'm going with the, the one, two, three, okay. four, and eight. So taking, uh, what is that, almost 60% of the field? Yeah. Yeah, who would be the top, the little bit the top choice? You know, there's you're going deep, so you don't really have a strong opinion. Well, who's the slight lean in this spot? I went with the four, just right on cue. Okay, the horse that we liked a lot in uh, on I, trial nights for I the. I singled him. I made him the lock that night, <laughs> and I, I liked it too. Um, I, I made him one of my top selections in that race, uh, just right on cue, and another one of those horses that. You know, kind of struggle a little bit first time under the lights. Yes, that Losal just didn't break, uh, you know, sharply at all. If you can, we can see there, the horse was seventh out of the gate and came on with a nice, nice uh, late run there. And before that, horses has always shown the ability to finish nicely. So I think now the experience once again probably gives them a little bit of the edge in this field. But a solid, solid field overall of Fresno Way. And Western Slope, they face each other and have, have done some good things against the yeah. uh, PCQHRA Futurity Qualifier in Precision. And the, the horse that's interesting is the number two horse, Nomad, uh, coming back after a little bit of a break since July 10th, first out. And early on, this horse, uh, you know, showed some ability winning uh, her uh, his maiden effort by a length. Yeah, from the family of Nomadic in Circle City. In a nomad, Moonlight Corona has turned out to be such a good broomer for Dr. Red Allred. A very good competitor allows. I'll, if this race was 350 or longer, Orlando, I would probably take a shot right back and single just right on cue. But because they're cutting back all the way back to 300 yards, I'm not so sure I want to take them all out again. Um, but he's, he's talented. I'm not going to give up on him. Uh, Nomad is interesting because we know he can run well fresh. He did it first time out. His workout of 1250 wasn't really as flashy as some other workouts, but he took care of business. He looked good. He galloped out with good energy. Uh, Western Slope, uh, I believe you've liked this horse before. So yep, to the outside have. post is probably, it's probably going to be a good spot for him to have. Uh, so he's another one of those runners that is probably going to be one of the main contenders as well. And that combination of Cruz Mendes and Mike Castleman has been clicking all season long. Yes. So uh, that's why I had to include him in my, you know, in this part of where, where I'm spreading here in race 10. That's going to be a fun allowance event to end the card there for a Sunday night. And to look ahead, Orlando, the entries are hot off the presses for <laughs> Sunday night. The entries are out. But before we get to the entries, actually... I'll bring them up. I'll bring up the entries, and maybe we can uh, talk a little bit about uh, this event, uh, Sunday's event, because we'll have the Golden State Million. But there's some very interesting, important news coming out of the Golden State Million. And let's start with that. What are the, the important news coming out of the big final? Well, we'll have an eight-horse field that will be actually racing on Golden State Million Futurity night in this race. Uh, Ten horses entered, but Golden Boy and Minecraft, both horses from the barn of Valentin Zamudio, will not be uh, actually running in the final. Uh, Golden Boy had some uh, uh, health issues, got a temperature, had some uh, abdominal issues. Um, they had to send him to a clinic to uh, kind of help him out there, hydrate him and all. Uh, talked to Valentin Zamudio this morning, and he said the horse is doing a lot better uh, on as of Thursday morning. He's getting better and better, uh, eating a lot better, and he's hoping to have him back uh, back home with him uh, by Monday. Uh, Minecraft had a little chip, so he'll be having surgery, so we'll, we won't be seeing him until most likely his three-year-old campaign. So uh, unfortunately, those two horses will be missing from the uh, Golden State Million field, Jose. Yeah, so they had a drawn post in four and six, respectively, so Golden Boy and Minecraft are out of the final. That leaves us with the field of eight. So the uh, whiskey glasses was drawn towards the outside. We'll get to drop in a little bit there, have more room to work with. So interesting news. And obviously the defection of Golden Boy, it really changes the entire complexion of this race, Orlando, given his qualifying time. That really opens it up more. Uh, who were you able to catch up here uh, this week at Los Al about these, uh, these connections? Well, we were able to chat with uh, several of the trainers and connections of horses in this race. Uh, let's start with 
number eight, just a cool boy. And this time I was able to talk to uh, Casey Willis, uh, the son of trainer Eddie Willis, his assistant trainer as well. And Casey is overlooking the entire barn for Eddie Willis here at Los Alamitos. And, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to talk to him about number eight, just a cool boy. Remember, this horse posted the second fastest time to the Golden State Million. We're here with Casey Willis, the son of trainer Eddie Willis, champion trainer Eddie Willis, as well as his assistant trainer here at Los Alamitos. Uh, tell me a little bit about Just a Cool Boy. We got a big race coming up on Sunday, and uh, Just a Cool Boy has just been terrific here at Los Alamitos. Yeah, um, Dad really done a good job saving this horse all year to bring out here, and he hasn't disappointed so far. You know, I feel like you know he's the lightest race horse in there, and and he's on the up every time, so hopefully we go up a little more. Seems to have adjusted to uh, life uh, in California just fine, uh, winning from the rail first out and uh, coming back and posting a really good time in the trials. Yeah, I mean, he, he went from the inside to the outside and didn't affect him either way. So, uh, I mean, like I say, he, like, he wants to be a racehorse. So, I mean, he should do, he should be fine. How long have you been uh, uh, working you know, deeply in with quarter horses have been pretty much your entire oh, life. Yeah, basically my entire life. So, yeah, he's a he's a special horse. I mean, he's a he's the kind you you want every year. And, you know, pretty blessed to have him. But he's also the kind that took a lot of patience and uh, well deserving owners of the horse and everything else. So, you also have several horses uh, that will be racing on Saturday night here at Los Alamitos. Uh, is there anyone in particular that you're looking forward to the most to see him run? I think that uh, a political be hope Philly. I think she'll be really hard to beat Saturday night. And I, I think she's ready to go, and uh, both all three will be pretty tough. There was uh, Casey Willis, just a cool boy, Orlando. He's looked sensational both starts. Uh, what I liked about him is that not only he did he stretch back out to 40 yards and did it impressively, but he defeated a couple of runners that were already grade one futurity finalists in that field. A couple of them had uh, futurity finals experience. But he took care of business, and he did it very easily. It was just impressive. Yeah, one of the horses that uh, finished second, Significant Dynasty, also qualified to uh, to the Golden State Million. And I think that you got to like is, like, he won impressively from the outside post. He won impressively on trial night from the inside post. Now he draws num post number eight. It's a really nice spot for just a cool boy. Yeah, I think the post uh, is as well. And given that he's got two races under this belt locally, I think that just benefits him as well. Who else were you able to catch up here? Well, we went and uh, visited with Monte Rosa. He's got a triple threat here in this race uh, with Hallelujah Nights in Hot Pursuit and Whiskey Glasses. Triple threat for owners Don Ranch. We caught up with Monte Rosa to... Uh, Get a little insight on each of those horses. A big Sunday night of action, Monty. Golden State Million Futurity. You have three horses in there, including a trial winner, Whiskey Glasses, also in hot pursuit, and of course, Hallelujah Night. All of them are very accomplished runners. Let's start with Whiskey Glasses. How is the horse running doing after uh, his nice trial win? He came out of his trial really well. You know, we had him in Oklahoma early, and he ran well there and ran well. and. Um, uh, Rio Dosa, and then that was his first start here under the lights and I was proud of the race that he ran. I thought he ran a good trial. Uh, Jesus Ayala did a nice job riding him and um, thought he ran well. He came out of the trial great, um, seems to be uh, feeling well and has been eating good and training good and so excited about him. How about the other two in Hot Pursuit and Hallelujah Night? They've been in million dollar races before here on Los South. You know, Hallelujah Nights, he, um, he's kind of been a little warrior, you know, he's not very big and um, I don't know if anybody really expected him to run like he has. Um, I had had a, a half sister to him that ran here before uh, Seduction and she was pretty nice filly and um, you know, he stepped up and he ran a nice trial race, you know, Golden Boy out running him in the trials and um, you know, he ran well at Rio Dosa and he's just, he's always there. He's, he's not real big, but um, you know, he has a lot of heart and I'm excited about him as well. But in Hot Pursuit, just the bloodlines are tremendous. Champions in, the, in his pedigree. Yeah, he's got a you know a family to live up to, and um, you know he he ran a, he was a little flat I thought in the trials he didn't break quite as sharp. We didn't run him back in the juvenile at Rio Dosa. He had a little bit of time off, and so we're hoping that that trial race you know sharpened him up for this. Uh, you know he came out of the trial good. We just stood actually all three of them this morning at the gate, and they did great. But in hot pursuit was probably the most focused this morning. 
he um you know he, he was on it so thanks so much it's gonna be a great race thank you there was monte rosa he's got three accomplished runners with already good resumes orlando that's always a good spot to be coming into this final where you have runners that all have races that are good enough to be one of the main contenders in this spot hallelujah knights finished second and hot pursuit finished second and then whiskey glasses was the trial winner out of those three what do you think what do you think about the post positions for these three runners you know i really like it for number 10 whiskey glasses uh from the outside post uh he'll have plenty of room to operate you know he's shown some speed but he's also shown that you know he's he can kind of trail a little bit but he'll have plenty of room to run out there and remember with two horses not running here he's not going to be all the way out post number sure. 10 he's going to be kind of in a nice spot with plenty of uh locations to move and i think that kind of you know will benefit him and jesus rio sayala you know, if he can get him nicely out of the gate, this horse can be, you know, can be doing some good things late. Should we read anything into that Armando Cervantes lands on in hot pursuit, even though he qualified Hallelujah Knights as well? But I mean, Jose, look at the breeding on in hot pursuit, you know, some uh, big time uh, family. That's a big time yes. family that we've seen mm -hmm. hot scenting some other runners that ha are from that from that group. So and this horse ran second in the Edberg Million Futurity. Uh, the ran boy. second. Yeah, and uh, did well at in the All American trials. Uh, came back and ran a really nice race, qualifying to this to this uh, race. So, you know, if Armando Cervantes made the choice along with his uh, agent, then you know they might be thinking that in Hot Pursuit is the hotter of the two horses. And also, I just noticed this; I kind of overlooked it right now. But he qualified both of these runners for the Ed Burke as well. And back <laughs> then, he, he stuck picked... with in Hot Pursuit. Right, yeah. yeah. So they kind of made the decision back then. And interesting that in Hot Pursuit is a Colt. This could be a huge, huge addition to a resume, you know, for possibly a sire type of making type of uh, win here. So in Hot Pursuit, a Colt going in gate number three. I had a chance to talk to Jose Flores, and it seems like every single week, Jose, we're talking to Jose because he's always – in the thick of the big races, in the thick of the action in those big races. We talked to him uh, this morning about number nine, Chisholm, horse that had a super effort in the trials to the All-American Futurity one by over two lengths, uh, and then came back and had a really nice effort in the trials here, like we mentioned earlier, beat in hot pursuit in those trials. And he's also saddling number two, Dasha Dynasty, uh, a horse that, uh, you know, we've seen – Deliver some pretty nice races here at Los Alamitos. And look at their jockey on uh, Dasha Dynasty, Ramon Sanchez. How about Ramon Sanchez picking up his record-setting 154 stakes win here at Los Alamitos in a million-dollar fituity? Wouldn't that be nice for Ramon? You could have scripted, scripted any better for a Hollywood movie, Orlando. That could happen here in this Sunday, uh, Sunday night. Featured event. Let's catch up with Jose Flores here. No, he's doing real well. Chisholm, you know, he's kind of adapted well back here, you know, after Ridoso. And um, he ran well over there. And now he's, um, I think he's loving it back home, you know, and hopefully he draws good and we'll be in we'll be in good shape. And that's your dynasty. He's, you know, what can I say about that family? That family's always great. You know, he's a half brother too. He's a dash of fire. And um, hopefully he can pull off what his brother did too, win the Golden State fraternity. That's right. And, um, and and go on from there you know ho hopefully they all have a good go and see what can happen anything that you're looking to see them improve on from their trials you know i think um i think chisholm kind of put it all together last time so i'm hoping he just runs kind of the same race you know um hopefully he's a little bit strong a little bit you know recovered well from the trials and hopefully he can find one for dash of dynasty i hope he gets out of the gates a little bit better you know and um he obviously can run 400 yards, and and he just, if he can get out a little bit better, I think he'd be real tough. Congratulations on that, getting two of them in the final, and good Thank luck. Thank you. Jose Flores, Dash of Dynasty, and Chisholm, Orlando. No jockey decisions here, as Chris Mendes qualified Chisholm. Ramon Sanchez qualified Dash of Dynasty. Chisholm, though, looked sharp off the layoff, Orlando, defeating and not pursuing that trial event. He did it from the outside post. He's not drawn all the way on the outside. But this is probably a good spot to be with only one horse towards his outside. Yeah, I like this horse. I think, uh, you know, it's one of those horses that will keep developing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're still going to hear some big things from Chisholm. If not as early as this Sunday, definitely a horse that, uh, you know, has the potential to continue to grow. 
And what a really good feel, Jose. We got number five, Significant Dynasty, uh, a horse that qualified to the Rainbow Futurity. And number seven, Fortunate Corona for yes. Tennis Rodolfo Viramontes. His son, Armando Viramontes, will be riding Fortunate Corona. And this horse's mother, Matabari, mm -hmm. she was an outstanding champion, a million-dollar winner, won the Los Al 2 million Futurity, won the Super Derby, and I think won the Winter Championship as well. So just a tremendous bloodline, bloodlines from Fortunate Corona, uh, a, uh, a colt by Corona Cartel. We got some pretty interesting colts here that could be, uh, you know, this this race could be even more valuable than the big-time purse featured in this race uh, as their colts may be a future career as a stallion in the making here with a big performance on Sunday night. And at, I mentioned it, I believe it was last, uh, that, that week that of the trials night. I wasn't about to give up a fortunate car. That horse owed me money, Orlando. Remember, I had chased <laughs> and chased and chased. Well, guess what? I chased again and I cashed, Orlando. So I'm I'm officially up on fortunate Corona. That was a nice price of 40 to 1 last time out. I cashed a nice big three that night. But even looking at the other runners, we talked Hallelujah Nice, Vermonti, Dasha Dynasty, In Hot Pursuit. You take our Golden Boy. But then you got significant dynasty. You just finished second, just a cool boy. Minecraft is out. Fortune can run a breeding top and bottom. That's about as as you know as flashy of a breeding that you can have. Just a cool boy has done pretty much nothing wrong here, Los Al. Chisholm looked impressive beginning his career, Los Al, and he's come back with looks to be even stronger. And then you ran out the field with weak whiskey glasses, who's a four for six overall. Stakes winner already in his resume. I mean, this is a very, very good final, despite Golden Boy being out. Yeah, we have horses that have done some really nice things at 440 yards. So anybody, you know, whoever gets a nice break, that's great. But you're going to be seeing some horses flying in those final 40 yards trying to get that big, big money. So I can't wait to see uh, to see the Golden State Million Futurity, our second million-dollar race of the year here at Los Alamitos. It's going to be a heck of a race. Some really nice horses to look forward to on Sunday, Jose. And I forgot to look, but is Golden Boy paid into the two million? Yes, yes. Okay. So they have, you know, hopefully we'll get to see him later in November. He gets to come back and make a full recovery. He does have a, a, a nomination there into the two million free treaty trials for Golden Boy. So unfortunately, we'd not be able to see him in this final, but hopefully he makes a full recovery and gets back to action later in the month. Uh, that was great. Good. Uh, thank you for all those interviews, Orlando. Like you mentioned, Jose Flinch probably probably <laughs> already expects you to bring like donuts or something because you're yeah, always there in the exactly. barn. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, next time you visit him, he's like, so you're here so much. So when are you gonna bring him some donuts or something? Uh yeah. but that was I'm cool. I'm my up. mail now at Jose Flores's barn. You know, I just pick it up every Thursday when I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to be. They're gonna start you charging you rent over to the barn because they're doing so well and they have a very good barn this season with uh, obviously a couple of runners in the final. Uh, what are our post times for this week, Orlando? Well, 6, 10 p.m. for Saturday's action and 10 races on top. The average field size on Saturday, 7.8 horses per race. Really strong card. And uh, on Sunday, you know, we'll probably looking around 6 p.m. once again. And, of course, the big race to wrap up the weekend, the Golden State Million Futurity. Looking forward to a great weekend of racing action here at Los Al Jose. Yeah, that's going to be a fun weekend of action. Uh, Halloween is upon us here on this weekend at Los Sal. We'll see you out there this weekend or low. Thanks so much for, for all the insight. Thanks. Night Racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos Racecourse with the biggest pools of the entire season. Check out these numbers in the Los Alamitos Early Pick 4. On July 18th, the pool was over $207,000. On July 25th, it was over $188,000. And the Late Pick 4 pools are tremendous with over $168,000 on July 31st and more than $152,000 on July 25th. Plus, don't forget about our $10,000 Pick 6 promo on eligible Sundays as the total pool continues to rise each time. Night Racing's best bets, Saturday and Sunday nights. Play them all at Los Alamitos.